I've kind of announced this on Instagram, but not yet on YouTube. 2020 is gonna be a bit of a year of babies for us. Hopefully all being well. I am currently pregnant. I'm actually coming up to six months next week. I'm in trimester two now, so I can feel the baby moving inside me and it's literally incredible. I just lie and watch my belly and like see this baby moving inside it. And that's not the only baby. We have also just got a puppy and he is the cutest little thing ever. He's a Havanese and we've called him Bertie and I just love him with my whole heart. He's so cuddly, like he always just wants to sit on you and have cuddles and play. So we're like outside in the garden playing fetch with him, trying to train him, trying to introduce him to the cats. So I recently asked on my Instagram if anyone had any big questions around the pregnancy. Yes, Aileen? Let's get you up. <laughs> Literally not having any of it. <laughs> Good girl. Okay, breakfast. I wrote these questions down on my phone. Well, there's quite a few, so I'll try and get through them quickly. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, will you move back to Scotland? No, we're gonna stay in Dubai. Um, my husband's Scottish, and we're looking to buy a flat in Edinburgh so that we've got somewhere when we go home and visit, but we're gonna stay in Dubai for now. But will you keep making videos? Yes, whilst I can. Like, they might need to become less frequent, to be honest. I'm not sure I'll be able to commit to once a week because life's gonna get busy. Will you make pregnancy videos? Yes, but probably separately, like on Instagram and YouTube, I think I'll do maybe like pregnancy specific things for a couple of reasons, really. Like I didn't start doing YouTube to be a YouTuber. Like no one needs to watch my life. Kind of started the videos to share tips and tools that helped me to get better and stuff that my psychologist taught me. And if there's things around pregnancy that are helping me, to stay well and not fall back into my ink disorder like I will share things like that but I also recognize it can be a sensitive subject for some people like I have been incredibly lucky to be able to get pregnant so I kind of want to be sensitive around that and also I don't want to talk about pregnancy all the time and people use that as justification for recovery like well of course she can eat all this stuff she's pregnant no eating's not a pregnancy thing it's an everyone thing <laughs> I'm not doing this stuff just because I'm pregnant. I was doing it before. I'll need to keep doing it after I've had the baby. Is your gynecologist Edie trained? No, she's not, but I told her straight away about my history. It's something you're always gonna have to be conscious of, not just in pregnancy, like for the rest of your life so that you don't fall back into an eating disorder. So I do think it's important health professionals know. And I also still get like specialized eating disorder help. So I still see my psychologist and a dietitian. I'll do one more, then I'm gonna go and get the puppy. <laughs> he was sleeping earlier, so I didn't wanna wake him up. But... How did you cope with health professionals fixation with weight gain? Oh, this is so annoying. You get weighed all the time and they're always talking about how much weight you should be gaining each month and blah, blah, blah. Which you should, to be fair, like in a healthy pregnancy, you do gain weight and you gain more weight than just the baby. I think you're actually supposed to gain something around 15 kilos, but it's definitely like over 10, 11 kilos. And that's more than the baby and the bits around the baby, <laughs> the baby paraphernalia <laughs> is gonna weigh. So yeah you're gonna gain weight. My psychologist tracks it with me, for me. The way I look at it, the mentality I try and have is like, my body is just doing what it needs to do to grow a healthy baby, and that is more important than anything. So it's not for me to step in and try and control, like, no, I've just gotta let my body do its thing. At different points in your life, you'll have different bodies. Like when you're recovering, for example, you'll have a recovery body. Maybe you'll overshoot your body's set weight at first. Maybe your weight won't distribute perfectly. A puffy face, swelling, like these things aren't necessarily forever, but it's your recovery bod. Like it's what your body needs at that time. And same with pregnancy. I'm gonna have a pregnancy bod. It's gonna gain weight, like it needs to. Okay, there's enough waffle cake from me. I'm gonna go and get this puppy. Oh, he's still sleeping. By the way, we won't always keep him in this pen, but this is just to help introduce him to the cats. Oh, let's have one more little look. Stevie. 
I've just made myself a hot squash to help with my throat. Was it difficult to need to restrict some foods for safety, like raw eggs and cold cuts? Honestly, I still eat most things. Like, I still eat eggs, meat, fish. I just make sure they're really well cooked. Dairy, mayonnaise, cheese, just not unpasteurized unpasteurized pasteurized oh my god what <laughs> i eat pasteurized cheese bread potatoes rice pasta i've really been trying to not get too obsessed with diet during pregnancy like in all of the apps there's loads of advice about like what not to eat or what to eat for the best baby development but like pregnancy isn't a project you're not going to get graded on it at the end and it's not something that you can do perfectly and yes you need to be healthy like i still eat a balanced diet but you've also got to look after your own like mental health emotional health so social health you still need to be able to go out and eat with people without like panicking about what's going into your food i don't want to say i've ignored it but i'm really trying to not be too interested or too obsessed with it right is it hard to know you have to gain weight to have a healthy baby or easy because it's for the best reason i would say both like i have not loved gaining weight and it's not just the bump where i've gained weight like bras don't fit anymore they actually make me feel ill because they are so tight right, my battery on my camera just died so switched to my phone See, I don't love gaining weight, but obviously I want a healthy baby. And beyond that as well, like I also want to be a healthy mum for my baby. I need to stay well, like I want to be 100% present. I don't want it to have to share me with food. So if I need to gain weight now for it to be healthy, that's what needs to happen. If I need to be in a pregnancy board, like even after I've had the baby, so be it. <laughs> like the next question in the list was, do you find eating and gaining weight is like justified by the baby and i really don't think that's a healthy way to think because what happens after you've had the baby like you still need to be healthy then to be able to prioritize it give it 100 percent of you not be split between baby and what am i having for dinner which is a really harsh horrible truth and why it's so important to eat because you can eat like not just because you're pregnant eating isn't just a pregnancy thing it's an always thing okay let's go and see this puppy <laughs> Hi Bertie, you wanna come out and play? Oh Bertie Bert. Good boy, good boy. Right, you wanna come out? Come on, let's go. Say hello Bertie. Mm, yes, I love you so much. He absolutely loves this toy. <laughs> Bertie, fetch. Fetch. Now you gotta bring it back. Hey Bert, bring the toy back. Yeah, good boy. Fetch. <laughs> it's so good bringing it back. Oh, ball, we're gonna fetch the ball. Ready, go. No, you gonna fetch? Just sit there. I'm just about to make my lunch. I've been watching The Fool on Netflix whilst I've been ill. So I just lay on the sofa and did that all morning. <laughs> I thought I could just answer another couple of questions whilst I make lunch. So, are you worried about coping with a postpartum body? Yes. I am actually terrified about this, if I'm being very honest. But I'll do it. I'll have to do it because I cannot intentionally lose weight. And it doesn't matter if a friend is losing weight or I don't know, other people expect you to ping back to your pre-pregnancy body, whatever. Like, I can't do that, it's not an option for me. If I'm restricting, then my baby doesn't have all of me. So if I get thoughts of like, well oh, don't use real mayonnaise in your sandwiches, just use low fat and save a couple of calories. Like, you need to lose some of this baby weight anyway. Like, where does that stop? And then before I know it, I'm scared of mayonnaise again. And then I can't go out and eat in a restaurant because what if they use real mayonnaise in my sandwich? And it's like, I'll just be sucked back into my eating disorder. And the more and more I develop like fears and old habits, and the less and less I'm me. So I just think it doesn't matter if a friend does it, or if I think I'm expected to do it, or like I want to do it even. I might not love my pregnancy bod, but there's more important things, you know, like staying well for my baby, staying well for me and Brendan. My psychologist has agreed to keep seeing me, which is incredible, like I'm so, so grateful for that. And I've thought about maybe doing like a meal delivery service. Maybe even just for the first few weeks, like in case I'm busy or like tired or whatever, so that there's not an excuse to start skipping meals. Mm, yum. But also like my body will have just done an incredible thing. Like I'm gonna just try and be grateful for it. And like, it's not gonna be my priority. Like 
my baby's gonna be. Okay, how did you decide when to start trying? To be honest, I kind of feel really good in my recovery. I don't feel like food's my main priority anymore and I do still get some eating disorder thoughts, but I'm much better able to just eject them as soon as I get them and not act on them. So like tonight, for example, Brendan and I are going on a little date night together. We're gonna oh, pick up some fish and chips, oh, take it to the beach, hopefully for sunset, but we might be a bit late, and then go to the cinema together, probably get some popcorn, which in the past all would have been quite a scary date for me. And I still now might get thoughts of like, oh, maybe you should have a smaller lunch to make up for the calories and the fish and chips. And then I straight away have to just be like, no Meg, you don't do that shit anymore. Also, I think it's really, really clicked for me this time that I can never afford to lose weight. And it doesn't matter whether it's intentional or unintentional like, or whether it's like justified, like, oh, well, I was ill, of course I lost weight. Like, I've got a cold this week, it's not stopped me eating. That shit is never gonna be an option for me again. It will lead me back into an eating disorder. It's awkward as shit trying to <laughs> answer a question and make lunch, so. I've just come outside to have something sweet after my lunch and it's actually just started to rain. I might just stay out here anyway. Got a little dog down here. Good boy. Okay, so this is really long. I've got a couple more questions left. <coughs> For someone who wants kids in the future, I worry how past anorexia might be triggered by elements of pregnancy. Honestly, it can be an incredibly triggering time because your body changes, you gain weight, you might get stretch marks, your appetite can change, you can get sick, you feel tired a lot of the time. A lot of the core elements of an eating disorder are like kind of thrown up with it. I kind of think like these things could well be triggering, but just because they're triggering doesn't mean you need to act on them. And you can't, like if you have an eating disorder health legacy, you cannot act on body changes, appetite changes, like, and it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing as well, like, just because a friend loses weight from sickness in their first trimester doesn't mean I need to. Or just because someone diets to lose the baby weight doesn't mean I need to. Like, I can't. Just like if someone has a health legacy of, like, diabetes or something, they're not going to stop taking their insulin because I don't take it. It's different paths. Like, it is what it is. If you have an eating disorder history, you just can't go there with that stuff. Oh, darling. Just clean my hands. <laughs> Another question was about self-care and honouring your needs, especially if you need to like eat more, rest more, sleep more, all of which, yes. <laughs> so I was quite ill at the beginning of my pregnancy, so I didn't do yoga for about four months, over four months. I couldn't go for a walk, like often I could barely stand up, it was horrible. Did not mean I didn't eat, didn't mean I lost weight. I was so, so adamant not to. Yeah, it was uncomfortable. I slept a lot more, I was sleeping about 10 hours a night. <laughs> I was really just trying not to control my body, like if it was tired, it needed to rest. If it wanted to eat something 30 minutes after breakfast, that's what it wanted to do. <laughs> if it needs to gain weight, then so be it. Are you nervous your child will develop an eating disorder given the genetic component? Yeah, I am nervous to be honest. I think, what can we do? Like, we're just gonna love this baby with our whole hearts, completely unconditionally, and teach it things like all emotions are fine, you don't always need to be in a good mood, you can tolerate feeling bad, you don't have to be perfect all the time, good enough is good enough, and you're wonderful just as you are, like we will love you just as you are, you can make mistakes, you can fuck up, you can be a bit shit at things, like we're all human. <laughs> I really do realize like I'm very, very lucky to be in this position. And I know this can be a difficult topic for people. So please like, if you need to unfollow me, stop watching the videos, like do protect yourself. And also please don't think like, oh, her recovery is so perfect. Look, it's all fallen into place for her. I honestly think I only have the things I have in life because of periods when I've been well enough to get them. I think you need space for life to move in, so you have to lose a bit of eating disorder before life can take that space. Which is hard, because then you feel uncomfortable for periods of time, but like, that's okay. It's okay to feel uncomfortable. And like, things will still go wrong in my life as well, and I'll need to be able to cope with them and not turn back to an eating disorder, because you can't only be well when things are good, you know? It's wee man. Lots of love to everyone. Speak to you soon.